Hello my friends, and welcome back to our Blind Let's Play of Space Quest 1, the Saurian Encounter. My name is Butler's Bird. this is your Saurian's Gaming Channel, and that's something that wants to eat me, because everything in here wants to eat me. Yes, I see you there, like, staring at me. Uh, so, in our last episode, we escaped from the, uh, from, I guess, the Saurians, uh, who attacked our ship, and we crash-landed on this planet. We also had this weird cartridge that we took still not sure what's up with that uh we've already opened our survival contents and now we're trying to get rid of this whatever that thing is uh so i guess we got to use items i'm not sure what this does so let's switch it on and let's try it the disgusting, slimy, slimy, slurping, slithering sounds from the grate would not be improved by running them through the translator gadget. Oh! So it's a translator. Cool. Alright. Uh, let's see here. Oh, have we looked at this, by the way? It's a great monster. I bet he's lonely and just wants to be our friend. <laughs> I don't think so. Let's try the plant. Ooh, that worked. Aw, poor guy. We got its tentacles stuck. At the moment, he's stuck on something. Fortunately, not you. I'm sorry, buddy. Can we talk to it? No. It smells great. <laughs> Alright, let's uh, walk past this thing now. We've already gotten eat by this. So one of the things we're trying to do is we're trying to die in as many ways as possible because that's part of the fun with these games as well. We're just trying to have fun while we prepare ourselves mentally for the upcoming horror of Silent Hill 2. Uh, it's a pulsating steam geyser. It's an odd closed door with no apparent mechanism for opening it. You are unable to open the door by hand. All right, well, we have a couple things here that we picked up from the wasteland. It doesn't have any effect on the door. Let's try this lactite. That doesn't have any effect on the door. Uh, the magnet? No, that doesn't seem to work. Oh, uh, there's actually a geyser right here. I wouldn't be touching that directly. It's hot. Maybe we have to use the geyser for something. Is this response? <laughs> no amount of screaming will open this door. It smells pretty much like the strange door which has stood next to a sulfur spewing geyser for a long period of time. You get a whiff of sulfur in the steam heated air. Yes, a good steam cleaning might seem in order right now, considering all the things you've dragged it over lately. It's the facial peel that is of concern. It tastes like rotten crumble eggs. Okay, so we need to do something with the... Oh, what if we clog it with this? Bullseye! Sweet. Alright, this looks interesting. You gaze intently at the greenish pool of liquid, the first real sign of moisture on the planet. The pool seems to have no bottom. The gentle dripping has a soothing effect on your frazzled nerves. A small plume of mist rises as each drop hits the pool's surface. Alright, let's see if we can die anyway with this thing. Well, Scott, looks like it did again. Sure does, Mark. Let's run that again with the aid of our new How We Blew It Cam TM and Chalkboard TM. I have to say that carefully, Mark. Every time we mention something with a trademark or copyright, the lawyers come out to feed. Instant replay! Now, this is where Roger makes a fatal mistake. <laughs> <laughs> and we can all see the result of that mistake. Oh, fatal move, yeah. I don't know about you, Scott. Personally, I like to know exactly what I'm messing with before I actually mess with it. I guess we'll know better next time. Ouch. Oh, that's great. They give us an instant replay of our death. Oh, that's just wonderful. Oh, what a picture. Sure, you died a few deaths before, but this one really burns you. Planets are depending on you. Seeking, seeing you do stuff like this is definitely making them nervous. <laughs> oh, all right, can we talk to it? Drip, drip, drip. It must be talking to you. Oh, that was great. 
He leaned over the pool to get a good salt whiff and whoa, talk about clean sinuses. Oh, I had just melted off. <laughs> That's right, you have no head. That darn pool must be filled with acid. You obviously can't go on living that way. <laughs> oh no. You lean over to drink while the empty pool of liquid. As your lips touch the acid, or the fluid, you feel a pain which could be likened to kissing a lit rocket nozzle. Now you know what they mean when they say, don't drink the water. And our head's gone again. <laughs> Alright, let's stop dying a whole ways from the acid and try to figure out what to do with the acid. Uh, I don't... Um, we got this thing. Now not here, trying to use it somewhere else. Are we supposed to do anything with the acid? I mean, this is old school point and click, by the way. And in old school point and click, you try everything. It's just what you do. All right here. All right here. Not right here. Can we turn this on? No. Okay. Hmm. Just ignore the asset for now. I see drip drips up there. Oh, well this looks uh... <laughs> this looks not good. The beams seem to form some sort of electronic barrier across the path. Alright. Well. Wait, I can just... No, I can't go across them. Well, Scott, looks like Roger has done it yet another time. Sure seems that way. For those who might have missed the last move by Roger, or if like me, you just want another look at it, let's roll it again. Instant replay. <laughs> you got to give him some high marks for truly fine execution. We'll have to give it a strong 9 out of 8. Or 9.8. You found quite a number of forms to transform yourself into. This is the first time you've been Waffer style. <laughs> Alrighty, somehow you get the pressure that you should do that. If you really insist, however, try getting closer. No result. It's a good way to get that nose job you've often considered. You're quite attached to your tongue and would like to keep it that way. I wonder what happens if you get closer. Oh, I, I think it's just saying you have to walk into it. Alright. Magnet? No. How do we get rid of the laser beams? Uh, glass? Oh, we're reflecting the laser beams back at it. Ah, I see. Yeah, quite cleverly, turn the beam upon itself, fine and fusing into a state of in inoperability. Hey, how about that? Sweet. Awesome, now we just gotta get past the drip 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 room. Oh boy. We're gonna die so many times this episode. It's gonna be great each time. Like I said, I'm not worried about a death counter for this game because I, part of this game is dying. So let's let's enjoy that and not get frustrated by it. Like for instance, if I do this, it's probably a really bad idea. Actually, I've gone. Huh. This doesn't kill me. Ah, there we go. You're almost surprised by a drop of seared acid which boards its way to your feet. Now that's some seriously deep pain. So it looks like I just gotta cross it without getting hit by the drips. Yeah, nothing, nothing hard there. There's an the upper pathway in a slightly smaller chamber of the underground complex. In the middle section of the path, the acid drops have formed a pattern of low holes. No, it's not a dot to dot puzzle. Um, in the, uh, one of the things I read in the, the readme file is uh, they had to fix this um, with a patch because on modern day consoles uh, it's like at the beginning where I said you hit control F11 to slow down the game if this was at full speed these drops would be hitting the ground so fast you could not walk across this so if you don't slow down your machine on modern day systems this puzzle is literally impossible to pass All right, let's keep going. Hi, you still doing great down there? <laughs> oh great, where are we now? 
As soon as you enter the room, you find yourself surrounded by darkness. Suddenly you become aware of the fact that you cannot move or speak. A strange unknown force has taken over. A massive holographic image appears before you. Ah! Who are you? It begins to speak. As a pair result of your inability to understand the alien tongue, the being has sent you back to the surface. You need some kind of help with that. Oh, I don't want to have to go all the way back here. All right, thankfully we don't have to. Restore. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to turn on our translator. And now we can uh, continue on. Hopefully this works. It begins to speak. So you have found your way to my hollow chamber. Fortunately, there is much more to you than meets the eye. I have been monitoring your travels on a planet. It appears that you are up with the proverbial estuary without a means of locomotion. In other words, you're on the Leather Express, slapping the dogs, pounding the sand, you kill for a fine ride. You are obviously in need of transportation. Let us see if you are worthy of our assistance. On the surface lives a beast called Urat. He proves to be a bit of an annoyance on occasion. Dispose of him and bring back evidence of your conquest. Only then will I deal with your plight. Good luck, strange one. Oh god, don't tell me how to fight the giant worm. Ah! Bring to me evidence of the beast or its demise and we'll talk. I suddenly understand now. With that, you find yourself transported back to the surface. I suddenly understand now. So, one of the reasons I'm playing this game is because a Shendafimist, a dear friend of ours who is just amazing, uh, once again, go check her out. She streams weekly. Um, she recommended I play this game. And she's like, you gotta play this game because it's great. Trust me, you gotta play this game. I have been ragging on her during her streams about trying to wrestle a shark. Because she's played a couple of games where there's, like, sharks in the area. And she's always like, I'm not gonna wrestle a shark. I'm not gonna wrestle a shark. And I'm like, you gotta wrestle a shark. And now, we understand why she wants to play this game. So, we would have to wrestle the... Oh, rat. Whatever that thing is. I see. This is just revenge. Ah, uh, Shenda. I see what you're doing. Devious. Uh, okay, how do we fight this thing? Like, seriously, every single time I try to fight this thing, it's killed me. Because there's no way to fight it. We got an army knife. That's about it. Um... If you're not sure what the or rat is, uh, you basically go to a screen... Where there is no skeleton, like here. And then... It, like, shows up and eats you. Maybe we had to get to, like, the right screen. By the way, that's really awesome. I want to go back and look at this. Hold on. A wide selection of... Okay, it's still the same thing. Uh, Loading about the horizon is the second and closest moon of Corina Corona. It is much less hospitable than the sphere you presently roam. Alright. So this is the ORAD, I believe. This thing here. I have a feeling this is the ORAD. How do we kill this? Because we don't even get a chance to do anything. It like instantly just kills us. I mean, the only weapon that we have is a knife and... I mean, that's it. We got a knife. Maybe there's something else we're missing. Um, That's death. You can tell almost by the sound. It's like when you get that weird ee sound, it likes, you know, it's instant death. 
It looks interesting, though hard to tell from where you are standing. This thing just drops this time here. I bet you anything it says watch out or something. We'll, we'll, we'll try to read that next time we go up there. Because chances are we're probably going to have to go up there to get back to where we were, right? Oh, how do I fight this thing? Uh, hmm. This thing eats us instantly. We're on the back end now, though. Don't know if we've been back here. Yeah, this is still the same spot. Nice slug of water, which we hit the spot right now. Okay, we've wandered around long enough. I'm not gonna waste water if we can avoid it. What do we do? Oh, no, no, no! Well, that's a way to die we haven't seen yet. How convenient. You've been blown into handy bite-sized chunks. I guess that space piston article wasn't fiction. There's nothing quite like stretching out and enjoying the wide open spaces. So that guy seems to be on that screen. What if I... What if I go to that screen and I lure it? I, I have it like chase me. And we go in to the desert. He just tripped. He just tripped. Alright, um... Try again. Uh, I, I think that was working, but for some reason we fell because Roger Wilco has two left feet apparently. Or two right feet. I'm not really sure what the exact saying is, but you know what I'm talking about. Okay, this time we're avoiding the dunes. We still got this thing chasing us. I don't know if it's still chasing us. I still hear the music. And he doesn't care. Alright, hmm... Uh, let's see if we can just go up this time. Uh, that's the wrong way to go. That's the wrong way to go. Okay, this thing does follow me around though. Which makes me think this is what we're supposed to do. I just don't know where we're supposed to lead it. Maybe we'll try going left this time instead of going down. Don't trip. Don't trip, don't trip, don't trip. Darn it! See, the problem is, once I get to the screen, I, I die. But this thing is uh, attracted to movement, right? So what if I get to that screen, and then I just stand still? The thing will probably blow me up, right? How did, how did you just teleport way over there? That's right, we'll go around this way. The spider is quite relentless in pursuit of organic beings. Your quandary is that, to the best of your knowledge, you're the only one in the area being that description. See, I'm telling you, we're supposed to use this thing to blow up the, uh, the worm somehow. So what if I just stand... I said, what if I just stand still? what I do? I didn't stand still. Um, great job, Flightless Bird. Great job at that. All right, I'm going to try one more time. And if it doesn't work, I might have to resort to a, uh, to a guide or something. I'm not afraid to use a guide in this game because this game is hard. Okay, we're just standing here. Where'd the spider go? The spider's not here anymore. There it is! So the spider won't follow me, follow me outside of the, uh, the graveyard. It looks like. And now it says it's there, but it's not here. No, no, it's right there. You see, it doesn't follow me outside of the graveyard. So am I supposed to use him somewhere in the graveyard? So if I wait right here, see, he doesn't follow me. 
He only follows me around this screen. Uh, the screen with the, uh, uh, the, uh, the giant body. He this place can dehydrate a person. Okay, I'm gonna walk around until either I find someone to blow up or we dehydrate. And if we dehydrate, that's a new way to die. So it's not something I'm against. And if we do dehydrate, then I'll go online to try to figure out what the heck we're supposed to do. I have reached the first stumbling block in this game. Probably because I don't know what to do with this giant spider. The spider has to be useful for something. Maybe we're supposed to hijack it. So like use an item on it. Holy anti antiperspirant. Dehydro man. The searing hate and dryness of this environment sucks the vital oil fluids from your body. Your mind begins to drift uncontrollably. Mommy, is that you? Mommy, how come all the other guys in class get new mops and I don't? <laughs> Mercifully, for all of us, you die before the hallucinations get too hokey. And won't be long before you look like a scaled down version of the skeletal structure, occupying several hecatairs nearby. Well, we're not going to be a skeleton at least. I think I just broke the game. Oh, it says we got blown into bits instead of dying from the uh, from the dehydration. All right, fine. I'm going to go ahead and de die from the dehydration. Um, I'll see you guys in a couple of minutes uh, when we do. And I'm also going to look up what we do next. Within a few hours, your gaunt corpse will have dried to a crisp. Your powdered remains evenly distributed across the parched terrain by Syrian gust. So that's a death scene with the, uh, the dehydration. By the way, this guy actually does follow you. Um, if you stay like on a screen like this for too long, he'll find you. So the, the, the creature that we're supposed to kill is not the sandworm, apparently. I think the creature we're supposed to kill is, uh, do you remember that hole that we entered where we got eaten alive? I think that's the uh, the the guy we need to kill. Ah! All right. Um. Let, let, let's uh. Let's pretend that didn't happen, shall we? Anyway, so I need to. The uh. Ah! That was close. That was really close. I can't. I can't go. I can't. I couldn't go to the next screen. It wouldn't let me. No. All right, let's try this again. I was told to go east twice from where we like left off. But here's the cave. Ah, no, that's the cave. I want to go there. Okay, so we need to go east and then north. Got it. But I don't know if that's going to do it. Because like I said, I was told that you go east twice according to the walkthrough. And that would be like over there. And so we got this thing. Yeah, you see, he's not he's not going after that. So this thing. No, that's not it. Is this like the cave? Yeah. Ah, here it is. Aura is huge and ugly. Of course, your opinion may differ depending on what part of the universe you come from. You may also get the impression that it might be quite mean. Well, let's uh walk right up to him, shall we? Oh no! Wow, he's swimming like a baseball, a basketball. Aura has transformed you into a new piece of recreational equipment. Along with finding this treatment extremely rude, you don't survive it. It's tough to make friends around here. Relax, stretch out, restore, and let's get back to it. There's a vet training to be done. All right, so now that I know where the Oret is, let's go around the homicidal spider. Um, by the way, uh, I also found out from the walkthrough, if you don't slow the game down, it's actually impossible to survive the desert because you're going to get thirsty so fast that you're basically going to die instantaneously. Uh, I didn't know that, so that was kind of cool. All right, so we go inside here. Uh, let's look around. That rock is almost as big as you. The orbs and gigantic skull offer the only passageways for light into this gloomy place. He looks hungry. 
pile of skulls lie here so claimed by Orat, or was a result of them writing too many adventure games. Oh no! Oh, he charges me! Oh, I didn't- I didn't know he was gonna do that! Alright. That spider thing that follows me around? I wanna see if I can lure him into, uh, taking out the Orat. Oh no, don't trip! Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up! Go, 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 go! Now's not the time to be falling on your butt. Roger will go. Come on, man. Okay, so we got the spider chasing us. Now, last time the spider chased us, he didn't follow us in. Maybe it's because we didn't give him enough time. Okay, let's go ahead and save here. Where is it? There it is. Like I said, maybe we have to give it time to follow us. And then... There's rocks here that we can't use, and I can't get the spider to do us, to follow us. Ah, oh, there we go. You shiver at the sight of the spider droid entering the cave on its spindly legs. The cold metallic body search for something to get up close and personal with. This could be interesting. Kaboom! Yes, now that was cool. That killed two palms with no stones. <laughs> you reach down and take the aura part in your hands. Some of it oozes to fill the space between your fingers. Just leave the depressing remnants of unfortunate explorers alone, will you? They have surprisingly little say, and if they did, would you really want to stay around and listen? And scent these skulls may once have had is long gone. Compliments of the incredibly hot, dry climate. All right, well, we did it. Yeah! We killed the Orat. And I'm glad the Orat wasn't that giant space month uh uh space worm. Because killing that thing. I did have the right idea though to use the spider drone as our offensive weapon. I just didn't realize you know how to use it. Don't forget this thing breaks when you pass across it three times, so this is only time number two. No doubt about it, there's going to be an accident on this shaky piece of calcium rich matter. <laughs> so if, I guess if you, you could really like mess yourself up if you come back here a second time without the item. Because then you would never be able to cross that uh, path again, right? Okay, let's continue on. Wait, wait, I want to read the sign. Um, How do I read the sign without getting sucked into it? Uh, hard to tell. Gotta come closer. No! Okay, so it's done in such a way that you can't actually read the sign. I bet you're getting to truly hate this elevator. <laughs> oh, they just don't make games like this, you know? Not anymore. Oh, oh, wait. Nope, nope. Okay, good. Woo! That thing was, like, following me. Do we have to use that acid print for anything? This cute little item is an aura part, though I'm not sure what part. Yeah. Is that acid thing there just designed to kill you? Like, there's no actual point to it. It's just like, oh yeah, you crossed the acid. You're an idiot. Uh, instant replay. God, I love that so much. That's so good. Okay, we can die from this thing. So let's go ahead and save. And we'll just book it. Nope, didn't book it. All right, let's book it. Go, 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 go. Oof. Yeah, that's one of those things where you just gotta, just gotta cross your fingers and hope everything works out, you know? Oh, I don't have the translator turned on, do I? Oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. Yay, we did it again. I wonder if you leave the translator on, well, actually like run out of batteries and you'll lose the game. Because you won't be able to understand what this guy's saying. I'm back! Again, the massive holographic image appears before you. So, you have returned. Do you have proof of the destruction of Orat? If so, drop it before me. Uh, yes I do. Uh, okay. You drop the Orat part to the ground. 
The vision is silent as the dainty morsel splats to the dry soil. You are startled by a rumbling. Suddenly, an oddly shaped door comes into view and slowly opens. This music is so epic. It's like, duh. You hear a voice different this time, beckoning you to step forward. We got some wheels now. Uh. That guy was just a wizard behind the curtain. I mean, he was the uh, the hologram of a wizard behind the curtain. Where's the wizard at? Uh, when you step through, the door slides closed with a faint hissing sound. You are alone in a large room filled full of strange equipment. Please, don't be alarmed. We intend no harm. We are a peaceful race. We are cautious, however. Others don't share a way of life. Welcome to Cradona. You are standing in the power generation facility of our underground settlement. All power here is produced by steam. That is an unimportant to you, however. We have promised you transportation. It is a skimmer. It hovers approximately one half meter above the traveling surface. This is very important because of Grell. Grell and his like dwell in caves below the sand. If you stand on the surface too long, your chance of becoming a rare moist meal for him. Yes, um, we know all too well about the Grell. I am sorry, this is all we can offer. I hope your trip is a safe one. Board the skimmer when you're ready to depart. Good luck, strange one. I think I just clicked there to go to the next box at the same time it was going to the next box. Uh, so I missed something. So I'm going to go back and load and uh, once I get there, um, I'll just redo the scene after I die. Be right back. Uh... Yeah, I'll be right back. Ah, stop getting get you by acid! Goodness! There you go, okay. The skimmer is programmed to take you to a settlement on the other side of Corona called Ulent's Flats. You can make further travel arrangements there. I'm sorry, this is all we can offer. Hope your trip is a safe one. For the skimmer when you are ready to depart. Good luck, strange one. Okay, so that was the line that we missed. Uh, so we're going to a place called Yulena Flats. Uh, let's look around, though, before we head off, shall we? Uh, there's nothing visible on the computer screen. The glass tubes are really quite intriguing. You've never seen anything remotely like them. Must be some radical new technology. As described, it is a sand skimmer, and it looks like it has skimmed quite a bit of sand in its time. On it is a panel which has a small readout, currently dark, and a keyhole with a key in it. it does seem intelligent to mess with. It doesn't seem intelligent to mess with it. You might need to insert a data cartridge for the signal. Oh! Can we insert this? Loading. Whoever shall be this, my name is Dr. Slash Bohal. I am a scientist with the Star Generator Project aboard the Star Lab Arcada. We have just successfully completed the development and testing of the Star Generator. During this time, I have come to believe that our progress has been monitored by others. I fear that the Syrians may have learned of our mission. And if my fears prove true, the Star Generator and the people of our universe are in serious jeopardy. The Star Generator is a miraculous device. Used as intended, it will help preserve life for eons to come. Used as a device for evil, it will cause the destruction of millions of lives and enslave all who oppose the Syrians. Encoded within this cartridge are all the plans and classifications for the construction of the Star Generator. Should any disaster befall the Star Generator project, scientists would be able to create a duplicate of the Star Generator with this information. Please guard it with your life and return it to the Zenin ruling body as quickly as possible. Important note, the Star Generator is capable of self-destruction. This, this was introduced to system as a precaution. To activate it, one must enter the code 3465. should probably write that down. 3465 destruction no oh, self-destruction code a five minute timer will begin to count down beware anyone within five kilometers of the star generator will be in danger once the timer has been initiated please be careful and good luck so five minutes and five kilometers five minutes and five kilometers all right so i also um uh when i went to get some information for the game for the description of the youtube video uh i 
I also noted that the the star generator is heavily influenced from Star Trek II Wrath of Khan, uh, the Genesis device, which is pretty neat. I also realized that I forgot to put a Shen of Fire Mrs. channel in the description box. I will fix that, so it should be there uh, in the last video and this video as of this um, recording. Uh, you decide not to. The Sovas say might crumble and bring the whole place down. Cylinder doesn't answer, of course. Computer is so ancient, it probably doesn't even respond to voice input. You suspect that they smell like rusty metal, since that's what they are made of. Computer does smell very interesting. Look at the cylinder, it seems like a waste of tongue, time and tongue power. The tastes are really dull. You decide you'd rather have a cheeseburger. And you wonder, do they have a monolith burger somewhere in this neighborhood? <laughs> I want a burger now. Actually, I'm making a hamburger casserole for dinner tonight, so. He's got a wrench, he knows how to use it. There's no fuel order. This puppy runs on 14 D volts cells and a 9 volt. Don't bother the guy, he's busy. Aw, oh, I can't do anything with him. I should probably turn this off, right? Yes, turn that off. Okay, well. You guys ready? Vroom, vroom! Hey, it works! This section is an arcade sequence. Would you like to- Ah, oh, let's play it. Uh, whoa! Right, I have to know what happens if you die first. <laughs> Do we get eaten? Ah, Late warning, the big rock cuts you no slack. It would've been funny if the giant thing like came up and ate us um, after we did that. It would've just been so cool. Uh, I, did I use the... Yeah, I used it because it's gone from my inventory, okay. All right, let's uh, let's try this for real this time. It's kind of hard with a mouse though to uh, to avoid this, but I'm gonna try. Reminds me a lot of uh, it reminds me a lot of Star Trek: The Old Republic. Oh, it goes where I click. Ah, I see. Oh, these things go fast. Whoa! Oh, that's so fair. The big one's killing you instantly. Ah. Ah. Can you see a fail compilation of this coming? Uh, possibly. I mean, if, if we fail multiple, multiple, multiple times, I may just have to make a, a fail compilation of me just dying so many times. It looks like we can get hit by the small box three times, but one big rock will kill us. So if we need to choose between a big and a small, choose the small. All right, so far so good. I wonder how long this lasts. Doesn't really give us a location. Whoa! There it is, I see the town ahead. It's coming into view. Come on, we can do this, we can do this. Ah, that was close. Come on. Keep going. Keep going. Oh my goodness. Okay, I chose right. Like I said, if I have to choose between a small one and a big one, we gotta hit the small one. Oh man, this is gonna take forever. That town is so far away. Oh. Oof. And they have these one hit instant kills, which really, really cause you to freak out. I wonder if I could just stay like all the way to the left and be safe. Cause all the all the rocks seem to have come from oh, okay, that one went all the way to the right. Maybe not. Okay, the town's coming closer in view. We're getting there. We're getting there. Come on, do not get hit by a big rock. Okay, we're, we're almost there, maybe. I mean it's hard to tell because I have no idea to gauge distance in this angle. Whoa, that was close! The game actually lagged there for a second. It was like, should we kill him? Should we kill him? I mean, we could kill him if we don't decide not. Oh, wow, that was close. Woo. That was pretty intense. No kidding. Hey, we made it. What the rock bar After a truly stone-crushing journey, you have miraculously arrived safely in Yulin Splats. And just in time, too, because the skimmer's power cell has been drained. It will take some time to recharge itself. This place isn't quite what you had expected. It's semi-bleak at best. 
An odd-looking fellow is lounging against the wall of a nearby building, watching you with a great deal of interest. Huh. Uh, hello? Um, hi. Can I help you? How would you like to unload it for the unheard of price of 25 buckazoids? I really should take this deal, right? I can't see. Darn it. Uh, maybe we can get a better deal from him. Fine. Be that way. Oh, great. I have a feeling I just lost the game. I have a feeling I just lost the game because I didn't I didn't sell it to him. Okay, different safe spot. Uh, my name is Wallace Bird. This is your story based gaming channel, and this is our blind let's play of Space Quest One: The Saring Encounter. Uh, I hope you like what you see because I'm enjoying it, and hopefully you are too. Wait, the guy's back. Okay, buddy, you drive a hard bargain. This is my final offer, and I'm only making it because I can see you need it pretty bad. I'll make it 30 bucks always and throw in this well jetpack. It was previously owned by a little old Thark who only flew it back and forth of Philibut on Sunday. It works great in zero gravity. You'll love it. Uh Um I did just save, so we're fine. Great. That jetpack's gonna kill me, isn't it? Glad we could do business. In addition, I'd like you to have three coupons good for discounts and free merchandise from some of our local merchants. As a representative of the Uland's Flight Flash Cha Chamber of Commerce, I hope you enjoy your visit to our friendly little community. Well, we got points for that. And away he goes. The coupon gives you a 20% discount at Droids Be Us Near You. How helpful. These suckers have the highest droid prices in the universe. Hey kids, this bar coupon is good for five buckazoids and a free Coronian Ale. This is a used jetpack, real used. All right, well, let me save under a new file because I have no idea which one we need to load. This is gonna kill me, isn't it? Jetpack is useful only in zero G situation. Oh, well, that may actually be useful then. All right, well, once again, I love you a lot. Thank you for everything. And until next time, so long and take care. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to comment on what you saw and what you would like to see next. I always love to hear your thoughts. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more. Also, please do not forget, you matter. You are brilliant and you are loved. And you should always remember to be true to yourself. Don't let the world tell you any different. Much love to you from your friendly feathered flightless bird. Till next time.